Okay. Uh, um, actually, there you go. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday, December 8th at um, 7.03. This is a meeting of the Marina Advisory Committee. Uh, I think we have everyone here, but Walter um, cannot make it. So we'll start the first item on the agenda is announcements, open session, and public comments. Does anybody have anything? Sure, you read some good. Yeah, read some three times. Okay, hearing none, we can move on to the minutes from November 10th. Um, if you would please take a minute to review them if you haven't already done so. Okay, are there any um, comments, additions, uh, amendments to the minutes? Okay. I move that we pass the minutes as printed. Okay, flip. And do we have a second? Oh, yeah. I'll second it. Okay, Will, thank you. All right. Um, roll call flip. Aye. Martha. Martha's not on. Uh, Kevin. Yes, I. Uh, Sam, in the minutes. I think he's I. Sorry, I. Aye. Yep. Um, Ed. Ed Kane. Thank you. That's on. muted. Yeah. He, he has his hand up. Okay. So. Dave? Yep. And Joe, yes. Okay. Then it's passed. The um, next item is the um, Harbor Master Report. Will? Hello, everyone. The first thing I'd like to do tonight is welcome uh, Mackenzie Hartman. A lot of you know her from being around the harbor. She has been hired uh, as our full-time assistant harbor master, and uh, I wanted to bring her to this meeting to introduce her and uh, just have her join in and uh, see what's going on at the meetings and uh, participate. So thank you for coming, Mackenzie, and uh, you'll be welcomed here. Welcome, Mackenzie. Hi, well, hi, Mackenzie. Hi, welcome. thank you for inviting me to the meeting. Yeah, welcome on board. Thank you. So secondly, um, one of the main things, um, well, actually, interestingly enough, so one of the barges um, that went out, one of the scows that was being towed out hit a, hit a large rock uh, in the channel. Uh, down by buoy three and, or can three, green can three. It's a lighted buoy. Um, this is pretty interesting because, uh, you know, they've been coming in and out this channel, obviously for three months last year consistently and for, you know, two months, two months this year. Um, and today, this morning, I went out with the uh, Coast Guard. We were doing training from uh, zero dark 30 till about lunchtime. And on the way in, we examined this area, um, and what we found is that there is a, a giant rock um, in the channel, uh, five feet high, in a 17-foot mean low water area that, um, that the barge hit and uh, ripped a giant hole in the uh, front of the front of the scap. Um, they were pushing about uh, 12 feet deep 
Obviously, we've had some pretty significant tide cycles going in through there. And uh, it caused the, the rock is uh, five feet above the ground there. Uh, so it makes it pretty interesting. So we did check that out with the Coast Guard and with the ATON team today after our training. Um, so that was pretty wild. Um, granted, it's down in East Ham, but, uh, you know, it's the entrance to our harbor. It's good to know. I mean, we're looking at the maximum, you know, height over it would be, you know, 10 and a half, uh, pretty much the lowest. So, you know, not really a navigational hazard for uh, anyone, anyone in near around us. But um, just a good thing to know that'll now be on the uh, any new publications of all the charts um, now that it's been found. So that was that was pretty exciting. We also did some three D uh, sonar mapping of it. That was uh, pretty cool. We could see the whole shape of the rock, everything. It's a it's a giant. So that was pretty neat. Um, you know, the rest of it is uh, coming down to budget time and. Um, you know, we've been working with uh, Town Hall pretty hard on that. And moving along, trying to get this uh, dredging done. We got a lot of uh, fishing boats coming into the harbor now. Um, you know, pump coming in for the winter for dockage. And, um, you know, draggers, larger draggers. And uh, making some room for some of the other ones to be taken out of the water to get some maintenance done and their uh, insurance checks and updates, which is really good. And uh, it's been pretty busy, pretty busy between the holidays here. Um, well, that rock, how close is it to number three? It's approximately halfway between three and five. Is the Coast Guard going to mark it with a hazardous buoy? Uh, it's not seen as a hazard. It'll be on the charts as a uh, marked rock, but uh -huh. it's not seen as a uh, buoy buoyed rock. Given that only on a rare occasion we have a vessel that would even reach um, that realm of over 12 feet deep. Okay, any um, questions or comments? Will, I have a quick question on the budget. Um, I know that the um, select board reviewed the capital plan on, uh, I guess, last night. Correct. And uh, I saw you had a few requests in that. Um, I was just wondering if you could let the committee kind of know what you've asked for and, and um, I guess your assessment of the likelihood of, of getting those funds to um, you know, make those improvements. Yeah, um, one of the things we asked for was a uh, consultant um, to take a look and do a feasibility study for the marina that was um, turned down by the select board. Um, another one was uh, portable radios. Uh, we need to replace our 800s with the modern radios. Um, that's pretty fairly simple. Um, new, new technology plus ours are, ours are pretty old. Replacing our boom truck um, would be one of the first uh, priorities in the capital uh, plan. Um, going out many years, they really didn't want to address anything um, post, uh, I mean, you know, post 2020, FY23. Um, they really weren't uh, looking into that or, or, and didn't really want to um, go that far ahead at this point in time, even though we did try to lay out some um, five-year projects. But um, their main focus was on 2023. Um, mm -hmm. And that's really what they wanted to talk about. So the other um, for you know, the future, we also put in for the ice machine where, you know, not for it, but a feasibility study for that um, to kind of outweigh the profitability of that. Uh, we also uh, upgrading the camera systems. Um, you know, our cameras are, as it's been told, going along with the internet, um, it's kind of shoddy. So upgrading that whole, um, I guess, I guess they go hand in hand, the cameras and the internet, because we are all wireless via a microwave system down there. So they, um, they need to be done together. That's why we put that in 2024 so that we could uh, kind of get the nod that that was a, uh, 
good direction to head in. So we could bring in a, uh, people to give us estimates on that and redoing that system. Because, you know, even bringing in a company isn't free. So to give estimates. So, and those were, um, uh, you know, the boat at boat engine replacement on the skiff. But again, that was the outlying um, things like that. They, they really didn't want to address at this point in time. So. Okay. Thank you. Any other um, questions or comments? Okay, dredging update from the dredging task force. Um, this morning um, we had a meeting, the weekly meeting with our engineer and the contractors. Um, the amount of uh, material in the dredging plan is 106,000 cubic yards. And to date, they have dredged 96,000 cubic yards, 77 scow trips out to the federal disposing area in the bay. And the contractor estimates that there's about, weather permitting, there's about eight working days left to complete the project. So, that's what I know on that. Can I ask a question, Joe? Yes. Um, directed to Will, uh, with regards to the damage that occurred to that scout, is that going to um, slow anything down or, or are they going to continue to march with, with that particular um, vessel? So that vessel, um, they, they, they did bring maritime safety down. That uh, scow has been... Um, deemed non-suitable. Um, they did get permission to tow it backwards to New Bedford and, and then they will exchange it for an additional scow. So they will be replacing it um, with another one to finish the work. So we won't lose any scows. We'll just lose the trip time, basically. Thank you. Yep. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, Next, we have Marina Concerns. Anybody want to address any concerns? Um, let's see. Martha, are you on? You're on mute, Martha. You're yeah. muted, Martha. You're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, Roger. Yep. All right. Ed Kane, Ed Kane, you're muted. Ed? Yeah, I tend to stay unmuted unless I have something to contribute. Okay. All right. Um, we are on the section Marina Concerns. I show you Ed is being muted. Are you on? Yeah, I can I can unmute. To contribute, uh, I okay. just I, I do it so that there's nothing uh, coming over the, okay. the conversation. So um, you don't have anything now, Ed. Uh, I would just mention I've had a couple of folks come and ask me if because the season was shortened, uh, these are boat owners, slip folks who lease slips, whether or not there'd be any um, extension of some credit or something else to folks next season for having lost a portion of this season. Has anybody heard anything along those lines? That, that wouldn't even be um, legal for us to do. So it would be illegal? Um, yeah, yeah, our fees are set. Um, town fee schedule, those are set in advance and uh, they're set for those dates. So um, any alteration in that would be, yeah. So the, so the published or rather the contracted dates for the season that just closed 
was through the 10th of September? Not correct because of the dredging. Okay, I think folks are under the impression that was the, the normal contract. That's why, that's why I think the questions come up. It was addressed in that original contract, the dredging dates um, that the boats would have to be out. Well, I, I guess what I'm, what I'm talking about is the contract that the town enters into with the folks who lease the slips or the moorings. Yes, and on that contract, it was clearly displayed that the boats would have to be out by that time for that purpose. I don't think it would also, um, as a personal opinion, I don't think it would really be fair to all the taxpayers of Wellfleet and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts um, that put up the money for this to be giving rebates for that sort of thing either. But that's just my personal opinion. Any questions or comments? Will, to that, to that, um point maybe for the 22 um, invoices that go out for the season that we should just make sure that it's very, very clear if, if you're proposing uh, early takeout um, because of the third phase of our dredging, just, just so there's no misunderstanding amongst the boat owners about what they're paying for. And maybe you did that, I don't know, but it seems to be there's some kind of confusion here, so. Um, Anything else on that? Okay, I have one follow-up item. Um, we all saw the letter um, that Ted Castro Santos, um, Blackfish Creek in Mayo, um, had sent to Walter who passed it on to the committee about his concerns um, lack of markings, um, selfish gear, um, the element of safety. So I called him and um, shared with him that we had previously addressed in a meeting um, with people from the Selfish Advisory Board and the Selfish Constable those concerns. And we shared many of them and um, I, I expressed to him to feel free to attend our meetings at any time and to contribute in any way. And he uh, expressed his appreciation of that. And I, and I think we'll pro we probably will see him as we go on. Um, does anybody else have any marina concerns? Okay. Um, marina parking. Sam had put together a worksheet recommendation for discussion. Um, I think to, to summarize where we left off last time, um, I think there was agreement that, that it ultimately will come down to um, the fact that the, the uh, marina parking has been considered a municipal lot forever that it's shared by boaters and various other parties. And what it comes down to is, you know, now that we have dredging for the coming season in the inner harbor mm. anyway, um, it comes down to is how many spaces are gonna be allocated for boaters and how many for others. So who would like to start off uh, the discussion? Everybody happy with the parking situation? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Joe, for those of that didn't get a chance to read the outline that I put together, it was just a, just a thought process that I went through, kind of thinking it through. And essentially it's a short-term, trying to come up with a short-term solution um, that's really uh, marina-based uh, for our boat owners. And then, um, and then subsequently kind of a longer term plan that would involve, you know, maybe this task force, the whole town-wide task force being um, 
kind of reinstituted and, and, and getting, you know, getting that because I think that ultimately in town, there's a general parking problem. So the, the Marina Pier is one aspect of that, but it's a, it's a larger issue. So I know you were on the task force um, and you guys studied this before, but um, I think I heard from you that basically nothing was ever, you know, none, none of the uh, findings in that were ever um, implemented. So I, mean, I think that's a longer term, um, longer term plan. So I, I mean, I think short term, if we could find some way to uh, uh, kind of rateably allocate parking on the pier, the 230 spaces that are available um, for, you know, to ensure that our, our boat owners have, have, you know, use of a space, at least, you know, theoretically based on our, based on how we would allocate the spaces. And then we have other um, parties, you know, like Max and the Pearl and so on that, obviously have an interest in that parking as well. So we probably have to bring them into the discussion. So just something that kind of a shorter term um, approach to that. And I mean, it could be as simple as issuing a sticker and, and marking the spaces by by striping it a different color or something. Again, just a, a very kind of, I was just brainstorming it, trying to figure out how we could maybe try to solve this in the short term so that we had, um, some fair way to allocate spaces between boat owners and the general public that's that's using the commercial businesses and just generally visiting the pier. So, I, I know yep. you know, I, I was thinking about this and I, I've got a, a kind of a proposal perhaps maybe that we should do. I don't know whether it would be a good idea to perhaps maybe have a, a subcommittee or propose to the town that they have a committee made up of representatives from the Harbor Master's office, uh, the commercial shell fishermen that utilize the uh, pier area, and then the adjacent commercial properties like Max and Pearl, and, uh, and then also have a representative from the Board of Selectmen and everybody sit down together and, you know, and, and also how you include Wellfleet Marine and that and probably Bay Sales, you know, all the major players that utilize that area and sit down together in the same Zoom meeting or hopefully at some point the same room and, and talk about what the issues are and let them all have a stake in it. Instead of, uh, you know, we, we come up with like a parking thing and one group feels that they're slighted and the next group feels that they might be slighted. But if we, if we all sat together and, and maybe worked it out, perhaps maybe we could come up with some solutions that will be equitable for everyone. You know, maybe that's a little Pollyannish, but on the other hand, you know, I think it's worth giving it a try. And, and not only just with the parking, I think it would be important to have all the major game players sit down two or three times, maybe four times a year and discuss, you know, what the issues are there and what the problems and, and how they might, you know, solve them. And so, I mean, that's just a suggestion on my part. Let me, let me address that. Um, the, the parking committee was composed of parking task force was composed of people from the various segments. Um, they conducted open public meetings and just about all of the stakeholders you mentioned, Martha, showed up and gave testimony and gave their thoughts all on tape. And all of that was put into the final report. There were evaluations to be filled out by the business community, by the beach people, and all of you got one with your lease as voters. Um, all of that was compiled into the report and presented to the select board with recommendations, specific recommendations, and an urge to act on them at that time, which they chose not to. But, you know, as a member of that task force, I, I can tell you we spent hours listening to the business people come in and talk, to voters come in, you know, to all the various segments that want to park and, and use the marina. So that's that's all been done. And in some nation, I can tell you there's a lot of entitlement there. 
that they all think they should have a piece of it. And the select board agreed that ultimately it's gonna come down to their decision. I see this in two phases. The first one coming this coming summer, 2022, with the Inner Harbor done. And then hopefully dredging the following fall uh, of area two, the um, all 24 acres of the um, mooring field, which will increase the demand even more. So, I mean, a lot, just about all of that work has been done with people in the same room, you know, and they were given free reign to, to talk as long as they wanted to about anything. Well, I mean, I'm thinking that a couple different things. One, that was a couple of years ago. And perhaps maybe, you know, we should pass a resolution and throw it back at the Board of Selectmen that they look at that study and, you know, perhaps have a follow-up meeting and, and come to some resolution on what's going to be done. Because now is the time, you know, to really act on this um, because it, before it becomes an even bigger issue. I, you know, I, I think that we need to approach the Board of Selectmen, you know, and make a resolution, perhaps a formal resolution that, that we're asking the Board of Selectmen to take a look at that study and do something about it. Comments, anyone? Well, what do you think uh, should, what, what would you like to see done with the parking situation down there? I, I think that I, th I think we need to put some sort of I mean we have the overnight cap on the parking which which does alleviate some and I would possibly like to see a, a length of time be put on some of the parking now it, it may affect some of the boaters um, you know that go out for more than eight hours or something like that but if, if we had the sort of uh, stickering um, system uh, with uh, meters, then that wouldn't be so bad either. Um, you know, I'm just thinking of like, you know, all the spaces that uh, employees around town uh, would take up. You know, typically they wouldn't be our average voters going out for, you know, half a day or something like that. They would, they would be longer hours. Um, you know, and those cars are just anchored there that would alleviate at least 20, 20 something cars a day. Um, I don't know that even uh, paid parking really solved the problem. Um, it would certainly help the marina financially. Um, but uh, the, the paid parking, you know, if it's two bucks an hour, I'm working an eight hour shift over at, uh, you know, a, a place nearby, $16. Um, and I'm making a couple hundred bucks that night, you know, it's like, I mean, granted people are, you know, thrifty and maybe they'll park at Mayo or something instead and just walk a, you know, extra couple hundred yards. But I, I think, um, you know, I think maybe, maybe getting into metering would, would be a good start, but again, you know, monitoring the metering would be pretty tough as well. Uh, but some sort of, uh, you know, pay by app, like, like Provincetown, basically. And then if you have a sticker, um, you know, you know, one, one sticker per slip. And, and I, I've heard hang tags and things like that too, but, you know, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of hang tags, it's kind of like, you know, if you got a beach sticker, I guess that, that would be a good start um, or a marina, marina sticker from us. Um, the problem we get into is, is, you know, we need the authority from the town to kind of do that. Exactly. So, yeah. Right. Um, but, I, but I think it would help. I mean, you know, I, I like talking with Alfred about paid parking, you know, for his, um, you know, boat rental customers. He's not opposed to giving them a voucher to pay for parking to, to cut off the, uh, you know, eight bucks. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so um, you know that that could possibly help, but it's a it's it is a big investment to find out. 
Will, what do you think, um, what's your opinion of, in order to satisfy the requirement for our voter community, you know, moorings and, and slips, both, both, both commercial and, and recreational, I mean, how do we, because we have so many stakeholders here, we have the restaurants and all that, how many spaces could we kind of designate for the marina? What's reasonable there? I don't, that's where I'm kind of at a loss. What do we, how do we, how do we figure that out? Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. And, and it's been talked like, you know, we talked about, um, and, and sometimes like, you know, blocking off the second half of the uh, parking lot down by the trailers, um, you know, like right in front of the Harbor Master building past the ramp, like kind of making that up, you know, marina user only. Mm -hmm. And then exactly. you hear um, from the people in A section and outboard, well, I don't want to walk that far. And it's like, <laughs> and then you kind of slam your head on the table and say, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, it, nothing's going to be perfect. Do you want something? Do you want to try something to start? Um, or, or, you know, if, if you want it more, more in line, um, you know, hire a, um, you know, like a parking company that, that comes in and does this uh, as a profession to give, to give their, um, you know, sound, uh, a sound study on what they, what they would examine it as. I mean, you know, this, there's obviously companies that go around and do that every city in the nation. So yep. they would probably have a better solution. Right. I agree. I think longer term, that's excellent. That's exactly what we want to do. Um, just by way of experience and what I kind of alluded to in my notes there that I put out, Will, was um, I've had experience down, down in the Southern states in South Carolina and Georgia. Um, and they use basically an, an iPhone app, essentially, um, you, you know, a parking, parking app that has the GPS on it. So, and then you, you register your license plate and you basically pay to play and it's, and it's nominal. It's like a buck 50 an hour. It's not a lot of money, um, but it's an, you know, kind of a, a very simple way to implement um, kind of a parking. Uh, so all the beaches down there on these islands along the Georgia coast and South Carolina coast have this, and it's all seems to be the same company and, and it really works very well. So I think longer term, that's, that's something we um, probably should look at. It makes a lot of sense because you don't have to put in gates and meters and other kind of physical um, barriers to, you know, kind of a capital investment. It's more of a, it's based on a, a high tech solution. So, um, but I think in the short term, something like you said, and I agree, you know, something like a sticker, maybe we issue a sticker with, with a, a slip or something. And I don't know what, if we figure in peak times on the weekends in the summer, if 50% of the boaters are there, you know, what would that be for how many spaces we would, you know, approximately need for that, you know, the, those kind of estimates. And, and for sure, we're not going to be exactly right. Um, but it's going to depend on the weather and, and, and other factors, but at least it's, at least it's, a you know, trying to make a, kind of some, some organization to the parking down there so that the folks, when they come in to see the band at, at the Pearl at 3 p.m. on Saturdays, they don't take up all the spaces. You know, they only can consume so many spaces, whatever that number is. Um, so that's- One of the I things would. the parking task force learned is our town is unique. We, we looked at all, you know, the other marinas and municipalities and we're the only one whose marina parking is the municipal town line right. and the right. others have a separate. So that led the task force in, in listening to all these people for input, come to the strong conclusion that it really is on the town, the select board to provide offsite parking. And we gave them ideas about that, that the idea being that it is the select board, not a consultant who's going to want to give everybody a piece of the pie, but the select board to make the decision about the allocation and then have a parking consultant come in to help with the offsite parking with the shuttle bus. 
mm -hmm. to meet everybody, right. to meet that. Yeah. We concluded that was the only way you're going to meet everybody's need. Chatham mm -hmm. started that three years ago with off-site parking. But I look at, you know, we've got what, 450, close to 500 voters, all of whom are paying a considerable fee. Um, and um, there's an expectation there that, which I think we're going to hear very strongly from them, that, you know, they should have parking, be it on the pier or off site with a shuttle bus. So, you know, I think the task force felt that ultimately the burden responsibility is on the select board to determine, you know, how much of the pier, certainly for this summer, is going to be allocated for boaters. Now, going back about three, four years ago, this committee made a recommendation to the select board to put every parking spot um, by the slip, starting from the road all the way down to the bandstand for boaters. And that recommendation was rejected. Granted, it's a different board now. Why was it rejected, Joe, if you, if you don't mind, if you remember? They just said, we will not accept your proposal. That was the response. Now, that was a different board at that time, okay? And, and again, we didn't have dredging. The demand, the demand was not there. The demand that we can anticipate this summer and the following summer. I mean, frankly, you know, sitting on that task force, I can't tell you how many people were quite surprised at, at what a slip holder is paying for a fee um, and, and what a, a, you know, person who has a mooring is paying. Um, so there's, there's an education gap there. And, and we, were, we were, you know, definitely mentioning, you know, it, it isn't, as so many of them thought, re, uh, uh, com recreation boaters, that they're commercial boaters, that they're commercial fishermen, that they're charter captains. We included everybody and heard from some of you. And, and that, um, you know, there's really a need for people to do business there um, right. So, Joe, how do we bring that? How do we bring that forward again to the select board? All you know, um, being that it's a different composition of the board, and you know, we I think we, as the Marine Advisory Committee, we kind of need to make a strong statement that they should address this. I mean, I think just punting it or pushing it down the road is not not an acceptable um, answer. They need to address, and if you had a reasonable proposal about a certain, you know, segregation of spaces based on, you know, from the Harbor Master um, building down or whatever, and they didn't like that, that's fine. But what's your, you know, what's their proposal then? Don't just punt it and say, we, you know, we don't accept it. That's kind of, you know, pardon my language, that's just BS. You know, that's, that's not solving anything. Well, um, let's, let's go a little deeper into that. Um, Sam ended up with the, um, if you remove from the discussion table the 60 trailer spots, that leaves approximately 231 after that. Mm -hmm. So exactly. let's, let's talk a little bit about that and talk about the demand and the need. I mean, we all know how many slip holders there are there. And we know how many there are going to be when the mooring field is dredged. So as we look at this summer um, with over 100 slip holders and 230 spaces, you know, I think we need to be prepared for this summer to give them a figure as a recommendation. I totally agree. Absolutely. Not just throwing it out to them to decide. Yeah, no, nope, I agree. I mean, we're, we're, we're boots on the ground there, okay? Right. We have slips and we have moorings and, and, you know, everybody, including the harbor master, knows the day-to-day -day operation and the demand. Um, so, you know, let's open it for discussion um, with, with over 100 slip holders and, and how many moorings until dredging is done. How many of those 230 spots do we think um, 
should be um, put aside for voters and that's, for yeah, commercial people and for customers yeah. for charter boats. Right, exactly. I would just say boaters. Yeah, exactly. The whole, the whole group. Yeah. That was my question to Will because I've, I've actually done, Joe, I've done a little bit of research into this and um, the, the ratio of, of slips and moorings to spaces varies as much as <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> it's, all over the map. I don't see a, you know, there's not a zoning, you know, a restaurant usually has a zoning bylaw that says for every seat in the restaurant, every five seats, you need one parking space or whatever. There's nothing like that for boating in marinas. It's, it's kind of what I've found very randomly looking in research is that it's all over the map. So I think we do need to come up with a, and, and you suggested or, or will suggest it from the from the harbor master down, I don't know how many spaces that would be. I don't, I don't know what the count is, but is that, you know, reasonable for what we think would be a good proposal to put forward to the um, select board, you know, to make those voter designated spaces. And then we would sticker it or however we monitor the and enforce it. But we, you know, those are spaces that the general public doesn't have access to essentially. And I think we also have to remember that we represent the voters. The other, the other people there who want a piece of that um, are all very strongly represented. Mm -hmm. And they're not bashful about uh, expressing their views. But um, I think we, we recommend, we represent the voters. And there's going to be quite a contrast this summer, uh, certainly for the slip area with the dredging completed uh, with the increased demand. Yep, for sure. You, you mentioned something, Sam, in, in your uh, uh, presentation, which I saw, the, you know, maybe the harbor master and the police need to get together and work on enforcement. I, I think there is definitely a need for that, you know, from my experience and where I come from. Um, there's a lot of enforcement that needs to be done and proactive policing on the part of the Wellfleet Police Department, which I have seen as non-existent on that pier. Um, it's still a municipal uh, uh, public access point where they have complete jurisdiction over um, I'm not sure, um, maybe, you know, Will can fill in some of the gaps as far as why that isn't happening. But um, if, if we did create some sort of an, an you know, uh, a, a rule or a, a, a parking enforcement, um, uh, trying to find the right word, but um, it's just, it, it boils down to having police officers down there writing tickets. I don't think we need to have Will write tickets. You know, I, I, you know, I mean, I, certainly he's within his purview and he should do it if he needs, he feels need, but um, you know, it's a police function. And, and one of those things that, you know, from 34 years of law enforcement, I, I reflect back to the, you know, the times in our community when there were calls of complaint or calls of concern um, unless, you know, it's not being dealt with, it's, it's never going to be resolved. Yeah. And it's going to be... Let's, let's look at the specifics. The last couple of years, there have been two young people, um, police, police, riding bicycles on their jerseys. It's a traffic, you know, perhaps a motion can be made to have a discussion about having those two young people, you know, enforce the parking. But I, I don't, I, I think that's a valuable discussion to have, but I wanna keep on um, what we were on a minute ago, and that is a number, because ultimately I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure that the select board is gonna say, well, what are you recommending? Give us a proposal. Well, I think one of the things we need to look at is what's the percentage, if you can even project it, 
of um, uh, boat slip owners that are going to be parking down there on a daily basis. I mean, is 50% reasonable? Is 70% reasonable? Is 40% reasonable? I don't know. Um, you know, uh, but I think, yeah, we need to get a handle around what percentage of spaces need to be reserved for people who are stakeholders down there. Uh, that's, you know, yeah, exactly. Sense. I totally the, agree. We need to. The, there's mean, a point. There's a point we're missing here is that you just increase the going in and out by four hours. So you now, before it was limited in the back, you had two hours either tie, side or low. So now you got the whole thing. Dave, I don't think you can really even put a number on it because it'll fluctuate all the time. Yeah, you're right. The other, the other thing is, is that. We all know that the population in this town is, is, is it's skyrocketed. And the yep. only, re, only way you can control that is by cost, by charging people. Joe, you talk about the traffic cops. What, what are you going to give them a ticket for? P parking too long? I mean, you got people yep. working eight hour shifts. You, if they didn't pay and they, 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 the meter ran out or whatever, pay is the only way I see of getting out of this uh, quagmire. Well, what I was referring to, Kevin, is this. Let's, let's use, we have 230 spaces, um, 60 go to trailer boaters, um, yeah. 230 left. If we start with, say, 100 spaces for boaters, and they were marked for boaters, then the traffic cops could yeah. clearly police only those 100, leave the others for all right. the others. Business, you know. Wait a minute. Think, whatever. We're losing something here, though. What about the the commercial shell fishermen too? That you know access that for you know and and I mean. Well, I included them, Martha. I said okay. I said recreation, charter, commercial. Okay. All right. I didn't. I didn't hear you, Joe, either. I'm sorry, Kevin. I I didn't I didn't hear that either. Oh, as, yeah. as Martha said I didn't. Because I, I, again, my question was, I didn't know what the police were going to be policing, but now that you explained, I understand. Well, uh, you, want to, you want to start looking at the number 100 for sake of discussion. Yeah. Joe. Joe. Yes. Um, what was the number that we had originally when we did all those spaces that started at the beginning of the pier and ran along the guardrail side on the... Uh, on the uh, north side of the pier, um, what was that number? My recollection is that was about 80. Yeah. Well, is there a way we could maybe at least maybe try to repropose that and see what happens to the select board, this particular select board? I mean, I don't know, just somewhere to start. We've already got it written up. Um, I don't know, just something food for thought. Well, if you want to take that a step further, it, and I, I, I'd have to check the diagram to see if it is 80. If you want yeah. to propose that, I think part of the proposal should probably include uh, clear markings for voters only. Yeah, and right, then the exactly. traffic cop could focus on those 80 slots. Yeah, I don't remember. Did we specifically say what was like how we were going to do that? Or were we just asking to designate those? I can't remember. We were asking to designate them for recreational yeah. and commercial voters. Right. Okay, yeah. and then and you can and do that, flip, yeah, flip. You can do that with just color, sure. you know, striping it, um, it yep. which is not a, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, and then and, and then sticker. once the, yeah, exactly, a combination of a sticker and and a striping, and then the enforcement piece, which Dave alluded to, we'd have to, you know, make sure that we're coordinated because I don't believe this should fall on the on the harbor master. I believe it should fall on. <laughs> On the wealthy police and, and i and i think that you know like if we were to do that it should go you know like from pearl like by the docks the whole way down to the bandstand and on the other side i think it should go from wellfleet marine you know like down to uh the area where by the flagpole there you know to give the some of the commercial people along in their places to park too if you want to yeah. if yeah. you want to look at those spaces um I would offer to write up a proposal draft with those spaces. 
from Pearl down to the bandstand and then the others by Wellfleet Marine um, for commercial people. Um, yeah, like right adjacent to the dock. Right? Yeah. The, the yeah. whole way down to like where the, uh, the parking starts, where you sit in your car. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so it's I mean, the live spaces. You wouldn't yeah. want to take the live spaces away, I'm assuming. No, you no. want to leave the live spaces. Yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah. be willing to, to write up a proposal and I would, I would refer to um, what was documented in the uh, parking task force final report um, and bring it back to the next meeting, um, a draft for discussion. How do you feel about that? I think that's a good idea. A I, I like it. Good idea. That's a, that's yeah, because I, I think we need, Joe, I think we need to take some action because the select board has basically not moved on, on the task force um, recommendations from a few years ago, whatever. So we need to, you know, we, our interest is the marina, you know, and the boat runners, commercial, recreational. We need to, you know, make a make a stand for them here. So I agree completely. And whether it's 100, 110, 120, I don't know, whatever the right number is there, um, that would leave what what Martha proposed would kind of leave the middle of the parking field there. Yes. All kind of general public parking, which is it, it's kind of easy that way, right? So yeah. when they're enforcing, it's like they go down one side and they come up the other side. It's Simple. not, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, make, yeah. If you look at that, if you look at that proposal, um, running along the guardrail from Pearl down to the bandstand, and then over by Wellfleet Marine, those spots for some commercial people. Do we want to include the section down the middle from the harbor master's office to the bandstand. Do you want to include that into the proposal as well? Isn't that a uh, parking I for, uh, say, slip yeah. for uh, trailers? Trailer is that trailer parking or not? No, that's not in the sixty, Joe. No, no, the sixty is along the guardrail. Okay, they okay. mandated. Well, right. the ones, the ones down the middle. Do you have your plan to keep those just for trailers? I'm not sure what the uh, we'd have to. Will what's what's the uh, deal with those those spots? So what we've seen is the need um, for them to be for trailers. Um, the hardest part of the control of that is to fill the trailer spots on the. Uh, side first uh, to give the easy, um, you know, no, not many people can back up a trailer and they really need that room. Those, those spots, unfortunately, we have a parking garage crunch, um, but those spots should have never been there. Um, they, they really shouldn't have. Um, the ones down the middle, Will? Yeah. Yeah. So and you want to keep those as trailer parking? That, yeah. If it was cars anchored there all day, I think it would be worse. Than trailers, um, you know. Yep. So I think okay. we should include that in the proposal to accommodate trailers, as well as given the limitations of parking. Yes, Kevin. I agree with Will that most of you remember that when you came out of the boat ramp, the the with the boat on, you pull to the right, go down, turn around, and then exit through the uh, municipal lot. Now it's become more frequent that those boats come up and go into the, they take a left and they block those cars all along, up by, they head out to the Pearl. So if those cars were with the boats went to the right, then they'd have more room to turn, like Will said, people with trailers, a lot of them don't know how to turn them around. So I, I, would, I would eliminate those spots as Will suggested, uh, up the center because uh, it just it, it's not safe. You mean keep them designated as Will said for trailers? I don't know. I'd eliminate them. They shouldn't be there. The ones in the middle, get rid of them. Right. So are you uh, saying are you saying eliminate those parking spaces entirely? The ones in the middle. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. 
Well, that way it gives the people that. coming off the ramp um, a free access to turn right and, and make the turnaround. Yeah. And then they can tie their boats down, wash them down, whatever they want to do, and then get them out of there. And it frees up the access to the to the to all the parking on the left. Yeah. It, would, it would certainly be better served as a lawn tramp um, staging area, for sure, to get that traffic away from the lawn tramp. Um, and to stage down there as people come and go during our chaotic times. Exactly. You know, um, mm -hmm. and have it free so, for them. So shall I include that in the draft to eliminate down the middle? I would. How do the others feel, Dave? I think so. I, I yeah. think it makes sense. I saw a, a big ups, uptick this year of people, uh, what Kevin had said, Walk in that area. As you take a left, they all parked. There. there were two or three of them stacked at a time, you know, doing whatever they do. It's like, where am I going to go? I got a, <laughs> got a full day on the water, and I got to wait another 25 minutes for these guys to finish what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? Um, I, I think maybe if we had a different route for them to go out of the water, that might make more sense than giving up those, spl those spots. That's my uh, my opinion, but I don't understand, um, you know. Flip. What do you mean a different route? Well, it's when they come out of the water, instead of hooking right and going that way, why don't they, you know, there is enough room at the top of the ramp, you know, to the left, there's enough room to probably, you know, pull maybe one or two boats out and enough room for people to get mm -hmm. around you there still. Um, you're blocking traffic, though. You're blocking that, parking spots. Too much congestion. Too well, there's much always going to be there's always going to be congestion, but don't forget, we don't have tied situations anymore. People are going to be pulling out at the same time all the time now. I think that's, that's a good point. I think there's more room to the right. I would leave that alone for now. See, I honestly think that there's going to, not everybody's going to be jammed up to pull out at high tide now, or, you know, two hours on either side, they're going to be pulling in and out all day long. Hopefully. What do you feel the value of those um, spaces are? But well, I just think we need to hold on to whatever parking we, that's available to us um, for for access to our boats, you know, so that we can have a spot to park when we want to go out on our boat and not, you know, not have a spot. That's that's the only thing. I did. I hate to lose any spots that are available now. Well, if we if we um um. For now. I mean, if it's a real if it's a real problem, I, I would understand it. But I think maybe maybe we let it slide and see what happens now that things are a little different. And and at least Will's you know he's been coning it off. He's been trying to utilize it the best he can. And when he uses it overflow, I mean it, it kind of it kind of works in in, in some way, shape or form. Well, maybe in the draft um, we should keep those middle lanes for trailers and see how this summer goes with people coming and going at various times now that we have dredging. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. And so in the draft proposal, um, we'll keep that in there for now. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. OK. Um, to me. I'll put, I'll put the draft together. And I'll send it to you out um, well before the meeting. So you have time to digest it. And then we can uh, get into it um, the next time. Joe, when you do that, can you, um, you, you had a diagram of the parking field. Yeah. Of, of, can you include that and kind of mark the ones we're talking about for, for voters only? I don't know what the count is on that, but it would just, just so it's clear in our motion or our proposal to the select board what what we're talking about is 110 120 you know 100 whatever it is oh yeah so, yeah. We, yeah we'll have specific numbers great awesome okay good yeah kind of physically too of where it is which you know the kind of north side and the and the and the, a little bit of the south side there as well so I, I think that's a good i think it's a good idea well we don't have many voters on the select board do we <laughs> so I think diagrams are good. Yeah, exactly. More pictures. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on that? We move on to um, 
new business and future concerns. Anybody have anything? We just did a big one. We'll put that down. Anybody have anything else? Joe, before we leave that motion um, or that, that proposal, um, do, we, do you think we need to put in kind of what an estimated cost would be to, to you know, I mean, I don't think it's significant, but we, we'd have to restripe. We'd have to have a stickering plan, things like that. And, and so do we want to put that in the proposal? I, I'm just putting it out there for the committee because typically money becomes an issue at some point, right? They ask, well, what, it, what what's it going to cost? So I don't know if we can estimate that. I don't, I don't think it's, again, a lot of money, but just so they feel like we've fully um, kind of researched the whole issue here. My recommendation would be let's get approval on the concept and then okay. we can go to work and give them some numbers. Okay. Think at one enough. step at a time. I think, I think getting them to agree to a plan for a concept is going to be the major hurdle. Yep. I, I would agree with that. Getting on the agenda may be a major hurdle, Joe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> they have so many issues now. It's tough. Yeah. Anybody yeah. have anything else? Okay, looking at the calendar, uh, January 5th would be four weeks from now. How does that set with everybody? I may not be here. Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to go um, to the 12th? What do you want to do? I can, I can do the 12th. I don't know. Yeah. Remember about everybody else. What about um, other members? Is 12th good? Yeah, oh, that's better for me. Yeah? yeah it's, fine. it's fine. But I, I, I guess, Joe, if, if we want to um, kind of discuss this parking topic one more time and then put it before the select board. How quickly do you think if we meet on the 12th, you could get it in, in a February select board meeting? Because we need time to implement too, right? You know, to kind of sort out the details on this. So I'm just- Well, I think that'll be determined on how much work you feel has to be done on the draft I'm gonna to put together. Whether we need another meeting on it or basically you're gonna accept it or make a few amendments or whatever. Okay. And then, yeah, and then I'll I'll work to get it to them uh, as soon as possible. Okay. They meet every right. other week, so. Right. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, we can escalate this to a point where, at least in February, we we have a plan, so we can you know go to implementation at that point. Okay. When the select board looked at the parking task force document. Um, they noted that the, the evaluation, the survey sent to all the voters showed that most voters did not have a parking problem. Well, that was because of lack of dredging. Now we're in a different phase. And I think we need to impress that upon them that it's gonna be a new and different season this summer. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, if we can get it to them in February, March, they certainly will have enough time to act on it. Yep. Whether yeah. they want to accept it here, accept it or, or, or have a public hearing or whatever, you know. Okay. Okay. So we will look at January 12th and I'll work on the draft and uh, go from there. Anybody have anything else? All right. Nope. Happy, happy holidays to everybody. Stay happy safe. holidays. Yep. Happy holidays. And in another safe. couple of weeks, we'll break a bottle of champagne at the pier to celebrate the end of dredging. <laughs> yeah. Sounds yeah. Good to me. Sounds good. All right. Take All care. Right. Good night. 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 Good night.